Here we want to learn how to get the second derivative from a table of values. And so before we do that, let's remind ourselves how to get the first derivative from a table of values. And that's all about finding the slope. So one of the point, let, let's try a middle point first, because that's a little bit more complicated. It seems a little bit more complicated at least. But to find the slope at the f prime of negative 4, what we'll do is we'll calculate the slope between these two points. We'll call it m1 and we'll calculate the slope between these two points and call it m2 and we'll average those two values right so m1 is going to be equal to delta y over delta x which is going to be equal to 16 minus 11 over negative 4 minus negative 6 which is going to be 5 over 2 and m2 is going to be equal to delta y over delta x which is equal to 19 minus 16 divided by negative 2 minus negative 4, which is equal to 3 over 2, right? And so to get my value that I want to put here, I'm going to take the average of these two values, which is going to be 5 halves plus 3 halves divided by 2, plus 3 halves divided by 2, which is 8 halves on top, so that'll be 4 on top divided by 2, which is just 2. So that's going to be my entry here, basically slope here, slope here, average. Right? Now for an endpoint, you can't go on either side and get the average. Right? So we actually end up just using this one slope here, just this m1, the slope between this point and the other closest point. And so for here, we can actually just use the same value we already calculated for m1 before, which is 5 halves. Now, we can use the same process to start getting the rest of these points, and if you do that on your own, you will get 1, 1 eighth, or negative 1 eighth, negative 11 eighths, and negative 2. All right, so that's how we get the first derivative, right? We use averages for the middle points, and then for the end points, we just use that single point. Now, what will we do to get the second derivative? So let's remember that the second derivative is actually just the slope of the first derivative. So you can kind of forget that these middle points exist at all, that f, f of t exists at all. All we need to use to calculate the second derivative is these points here. And we're actually just going to use the same technique we did to get the first derivative. So, so specifically, what I mean by that is to calculate the second derivative at negative 6, I'm going to use the same delta y over delta x formula I used before. But I'm going to just use the delta y between these two points, and I'm going to keep my delta x the same, right? So delta y is now going to be 2 minus 5 halves divided by negative 6 minus negative 4, which is going to be negative 1 half over 2, or negative a quarter, right? So that will be my value there. So these are now my y values. So similarly, if I want to get f double prime of negative 4, I'm going to use the same technique be I did before. I'm going to get two slopes. I'm going to get the slope between these two points, and I'm going to get the slope between these two points, and I'm going to take the average, right? So I've already found the slope here. It's negative one-fourth. To get the slope here, I'm going to do the same delta y over delta x. So this is kind of like my m1, right? And this is kind of like an m2, except y is now going to be 1 minus 2, 1 minus 2, divided by negative 2 minus negative 4, which is going to be negative 1, all divided by 2, or negative 1 half, right? So to get this value here, I'm going to take the average of the slope between these two and these two, negative 1 fourth and negative 1 half, and to get negative 3 eighths. Now, if I use the same averaging technique for all the middle points, right? So for to get this, I'll average this and this. I will get negative 17, 30 seconds, negative 17, 30 seconds, and negative 13. 30 seconds. And this final endpoint where I'm just going to use the slope between these two points, no averaging there, I will get negative 5 sixteenths. So, big message, right? To get f prime of x, you just, for, for the inner points, you use the slope of f of x and you use averages of slopes, right? So, to get this two, I'll take the average of the slope here and the slope here. And now for f double prime, you're going to be doing the same thing, except with averages of f, the slope of f prime, right? So the average of the slope here and the slope here.